Hi, I'm Brett Hammonds with ProTech Equipment Resources. Appreciate you guys joining us today for our demonstration of the Mega Spy 225, which is a primary current injection test set for testing circuit breakers. What we'd like to do is kind of go over some of the physical hardware features of the test set. We won't spend too much time with that, but we'll need to go over some of that and then actually sit down in the driver's seat as we boot up the software and uh, actually go through and perform a test. So let's begin by just looking at the test set. First of all, it's a very small footprint for the capabilities that the test set has, up to as much as 2,000 amps in this very small package. So as we begin to look at the hardware, we can see on this end of the test set, we have our input power receptacle and an input circuit breaker. One of the features that most equipment has and gets overlooked a lot is just simply the equipment ground. This is really quick and easy for as a banana receptacle and the leads provided for uh, making that connection to ground and providing that equipment ground. Let's look at the front of the test set now. We see some Ethernet type of connectors. The top one is labeled STBI and there's a reason for that because that particular uh, receptacle has to also power the STBI. This is the handheld controller we label as the STBI. Now you can operate the test set from the STVI handheld controller, or you can actually operate it from a PC. You see that the lower Ethernet connector is for a PC and it's labeled as such. Next to it is another one that's labeled as out, and this is something that you would use if you happen to be cascading units and using more than one unit. You'll see over here there's also a USB connector, so you can operate the software and communicate with the test set using a USB communication cable as well. Over here, I skipped over uh, just simply a power indicator indicating that the test set is turned on. And this is an indicator that will light up when you or when the output of the test set is actually energized. A couple of more connectors. These two here are labeled as binary inputs. So if you happen to be testing a breaker and uh, you want to monitor via something other than a current actuator, in other words, stop the timing based on current being interrupted, or if you want to do something else, you can do a dry contact, normally open, normally closed, or a wetted contact, which is as much as 300 volts AC or DC, applied or removed. So that can be an additional uh, set of auxiliary stop contacts. Then we're going to start getting into describing the three output connections that you can have to the test set. And in order to do that, it's, uh, it's probably easier to show the illustration that's on the top of the test set. And we're going to lean this forward so you can see that. So. These, each of these red items here are output taps. You have a 25 amp, 100 and, uh, I'm sorry, 125 amp here and 500 amp here. The one thing that you want to make note of is that they have separate commons. The 25 amp common is actually on the front of the test set along with the tap connection. And then if you want to connect up to either the 125 or 500 amp tap connections, they're over here. This is a 500 amp, this is the 125 amp, and this is the common that you would use with either one of those. That's pretty much the hardware other than to say they give an additional output energized lamp here so that uh, everybody knows they do some redundancy there to make sure that everybody knows when the test set is energized. Okay, having done that, I just wanna point out one additional feature and that's simply the emergency stop button. If any, there were any reason that you needed to interrupt the test, you could simply 
push the emergency stop button. That interrupts the output capability of the test set. If you wanted to release that, give it a small turn to the right, and that button pops right back out. At this time, we'd like to go into the software and we'll actually connect up the test set and we're going to perform a test on a small 100 amp breaker. So thanks for bearing with me as we went through some of the physical hardware features. Once we get into the driver's seat, that's always the fun part of things. And so uh, that's what we're doing now. We've got things booted up on the STVI. As you look at the STVI screen, you see there's an icon that connects the computer to the SP, SPI. And that icon is turned green, meaning that that communication link has been completed. So as we look down in this portion of the screen, we see that there's a manual selection and a circuit breaker curve library selection. We're going to go ahead and select the manual selection and you'll see that it's just that. What it does is give us the capability of inputting a value of test current. We can select whether we want that to be a continuous or a momentary output and if we want to, we can also select an amplitude of increments or decrements if we want. There we go. And we're going to actually test a breaker. But first, let me go into the circuit breaker curve library and realize there's a generic breaker. Not everything's in there. So if you have a generic breaker, you're going to see this test screen. This test screen is just slightly different than if we would have put in a specific breaker type uh, in that we do have to put in what the frame size of our circuit breaker is as well as the sensor rating. And the other thing that you'll notice is that there's a graph in the upper right hand portion of the screen. We can expand that to where we can look at it. There's nothing in it as of now, but if you wanted to watch that as we perform the test, you can watch that as uh, the, the actual live uh, test being performed and if we just specifically selected a circuit breaker then we would have the time current curves in there and you'd see the test being performed in comparison to, the, to those time current curves. But we're going to select a specific breaker. Circuit breaker library we're going to go to manufacturer specific and in this case it's a molded case breaker we're going to select a cutler hammer and of a specific type it's a 100 amp breaker and we're just going to approve that we made the selection that we intended to having done that i want to point out that there are some icons in the upper right hand corner of the screen and they represent different tests. You'll see that this first icon to the far left has a pulse around a clock and it's a long pulse representing that it's the long time test. There's also another one, it's not showing up in this screen, but it's a short time test where the pulse is a little bit shorter and then there's a very short pulse in front of the clock here for the instantaneous test. There's one more icon that is a ground symbol with a lightning bolt through it and that's for a ground fault test. Um, not all circuit breakers have all of these features and because of that not all of them show up here in this screen. This particular circuit breaker has the long time and instantaneous features and that's what we're going to test. Before we get started on actually performing the test, there's an icon here that looks like a nameplate. The reason it looks like a nameplate is so that you could insert nameplate information. Okay, so now what you see is the same screen that we saw earlier, but the differences are it already knows what the frame size of the circuit breaker is and you'll see that there are time current curves on the, uh, the graphical representation of this circuit breaker. So it starts us out at 300 amps. If we wanted to, we could select whatever multiple of frame size that we wanted, whatever's appropriate, and then press the check mark to approve that. 
but we're good with the 300 amps. We're going ahead, going to go ahead and uh, perform our long time test by hitting the play button right here. And what it does is it says, okay, before I start the test, is this a 300 amp test? Change it if you want. Maximum time, and it gives a maximum current. You can't change the maximum current unless you um, start cascading units. And then it also gives a value or a magnitude of a test signal that it's going to put out. And it puts out that test signal for the purpose of verifying the output connection, the test set that you happen to be connected to. And it also makes some measurements so as to apply or initiate current in such a way that prevents there being DC offset or some distortion to the waveform in the first few cycles of the test. Hit the check mark and you'll see that it begins in this banner across the top. It's verifying the connection. Then it's going to go calculate the impedance of the test circuit and begin running the test. Now, it may take just a little bit. My experience is that this breaker should take somewhere in between 20 to 23 seconds to operate. And if you'll bear with me for that long, I think you'll hear the snap of the breaker as it operates. There we go. I was just a little bit off, 16.16, but notice this. Notice that these items are green, and that's because the test point, if we expand that out, you'll see falls within the uh, envelope of acceptance. So we're going to shrink that back down. And, of course, we can do that for however many phases that we need to. At this point, we're going to go ahead and go to our instantaneous test just simply by pressing on that icon. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner that it says instantaneous test. So just before we start this test, I want to go ahead and point out that even though we went from the long time test to the instantaneous test, it has maintained what that test result was on the graph for the long time test. Okay, so we have a 100 amp frame size breaker and this begins at 600 amps. Now we could tap that field and change it to anything we wanted and then approve it, but we're going to keep it there because uh, it, it 600 amps is right at the edge of the envelope of acceptance for this instantaneous test and so it will back off of that from an area that's not quite acceptable and work its way into the acceptable envelope. And we can see that on the screen as the test is being performed. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, it's verifying the connection. It'll calculate the impedance and then it'll start pulsing current and you'll see that illustrated in the bottom portion of the graph as it begins. And see it, it will turn green as it enters into the acceptable area inside the acceptable envelope of the curve. Notice it's turned green now. So it's pulsing. This one right here, we're at about 750 amps. And you can see how that is being incremented both in a tabular fashion and in a graphical fashion as the test is being performed. In a moment, when it reaches that point at which it operates within a five cycle time frame, that's the length of the output pulse, you'll hear the snap of the breaker. There we go, 1,160 amps. And everything's all green. We can see graphically that that fits within our acceptable envelope for the time current curve. And so we have completed our test. 
So that completes our demonstration of the Mega Spy 225. I just wanted to emphasize the fact that this test set is uh, such a great time saver for those who are doing a workout in the field. It records all of this, the results digitally, and that gets compared to the manufacturer's time current curves inside of the software. And so that evaluation of pass fail is all done within the software and it also populates the report right there. And we all know that people want the work done, but nobody gets paid until the report is delivered. So what a great time saver. You guys need to take advantage of the opportunity to use this product. And again, we appreciate your attendance.